morning boys and girls it is time for a sunday school lesson it's the first day of november hey did you set your clocks back last night because we got an extra hour of sleep and how wonderful and glorious and what a special blessing that is today we are going to um well i'll just tell you i'm going to show you something we're going to actually talk about Jesus on the cross today. We've been building up to this over the last uh, four weeks, I guess. We've been taking the journey to the cross. We started with Jesus's entry into Jerusalem when the people were so happy that he was there and they were treating him uh, like a superstar. And um, then we learned that he had to answer some really hard questions because those tricky people were trying to trick him. They did not want him to um, they didn't want him to be known as the Messiah. They didn't think he was the Messiah, and they were scared they were going to lose their power as religious leaders. And then the following week, we learned about the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. And um, then last week, we learned about Jesus being arrested, even though he had never done anything wrong. And today, we're going to take that last step to the cross. So we're going to be learning about what happened um, right before Jesus was cru crucified and his crucifixion. We have been uh, trying to learn a memory verse over the last few weeks. So this memory verse is from, from Philippians chapter 2. It's verse 8. We have gotten rid of a lot of the words as we've been learning them. I'm going to go over it really quickly and then we're going to take away even some more words because this verse is going to be stuck in our head by the end of our lesson today. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient. We're talking about Jesus being obedient to his Father's will. Obedient to the point of, you know what goes here? The point of death. Even death on a cross. Philippians 2, 8. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death, on a cross, Philippians 2, 8. We're going to go ahead and get rid of to the point of, and I'll draw those lines in there so we can remember that there were words there that we need to recall. To the point of death, even death on a cross. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. We are going to play a game today, and this game is called What Comes Next? So I'm going to give you a situation that uh, you're familiar with, that you know about, and then I want you to tell me what would come next after this happens. So let me find my place here. All right, so I'll give you what happens first. You give me what happens next. Here's the first one. First, your dad rakes a big pile of leaves. What is going to happen next? I bet you're going to jump in them, right? All right, let's try another one. First, your cat climbs up a tree. What do you think will happen next? Hopefully the cat climbs back down on its own, but if not, you might have to go rescue it. Okay, here's the next one. First, you go to an ice cream shop. What happens next? The best part, right? You get to buy an ice cream cone and then eat it. That's the best part. All right, let's say in this situation, first, you plant a seed. What will happen next? That's right, a plant will grow. And sometimes that takes a little while, but eventually the plant grows. All right, here's the last one. First, your grandmother buys you a new kite. What will happen next? You're going to fly that kite, right? So today we're learning about what happens next. After all the things that we've talked about uh, leading up to the journey to the cross, we're going to find out what happens next. 
today's Bible story is the first part of the most important story in all of the Bible. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Today is the first part of the most important story in the whole entire Bible. So that is pretty powerful stuff. Today we're going to learn that Jesus died on the cross for our sin. Can you guess what happened next? Guys, today's Bible story is the story that all the other stories in the Bible point to. Jesus' death and resurrection. This story is in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But today we're going to hear uh, especially from the books of Matthew and John. I have that cross right there in my Bible where um, this most important detail is, is uh, described. And I'm going to read what happens in this story, this very true, very important story that all other story, stories in the Bible point to. <clears throat> John chapter 18. Jesus had been arrested and taken to Pilate, the governor. Everybody say Pilate. When I hear that word, I think of somebody that pl flies a plane, but it's actually spelled a little differently. But we say it the same way. He was taken to the governor. So this was a, a government official, somebody that was in charge uh, of the government. His name was Pilate. And Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, Jesus said. Then the religious leaders lied and said that Jesus had done wrong things. But we know Jesus never sinned. He never did anything wrong. Pilate thought Jesus would say something about what the religious leaders were lying about. But Jesus said nothing. He was quiet. Every year at Passover, Pilate would let the people choose a prisoner to set free. One of the prisoners had done very bad things. His name was Barabbas. So Pilate asked the crowd, Who do you want me to set free? Barabbas or Jesus? The crowd shouted, Barabbas! They wanted this mean criminal to be set free, but not Jesus. Pilate asked, well, what should I do with Jesus? And this is what the crowd said. The same crowd that had been so excited to see him when he entered Jerusalem. This is what they said. Crucify him, which meant they were going to kill him. Pilate's soldiers took Jesus away. They made fun of him because he said he was a king. The soldiers put a crown of thorns on Jesus' head and a purple robe on his back. They pretended to bow down to him. They were making fun of Jesus. Then they led him away. Jesus was put on a cross. They put a sign above Jesus' head that said, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two criminals were crucified next to him, one on his left side, one on his right side. The day, the middle of the day, guys, turned so dark. In the afternoon, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you left me all alone? Then Jesus shouted and said, it is finished. Jesus died and was buried in a tomb. A large stone was rolled in front of the tomb, and Pilate's soldiers guarded the tomb so that no one could steal Jesus' body. Guys, I've taken away all the words from our verse, but we're going to go over it together. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Philippians 2, 8. Such a powerful verse, guys, because it describes that Jesus, who was perfect, was so obedient to his Father that he took our punishment uh, by becoming obedient and died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious, and they shouted that Jesus was guilty, and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate, and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on. His clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But we know that there is hope and we'll learn about that next week. Here we have some objects that will uh, represent some things that happened in today's story. We have, of course, the cross. There's also... Um, some purple paper which represents the purple robe that the soldiers put on Jesus's back when they were making fun of him calling him the king of the Jews I don't know if you can see this really clearly but this is like a crown of thorns that they would have put on Jesus's head uh, we have nails that were used uh, we of course know that the nails were used to nail Jesus's hands and feet to the cross and then here was is a rock and if you'll remember part of the story once Jesus was died he was placed in a tomb and there was a rock that was put at uh, the 
the opening of the tomb. Um, and remember that Pilate put soldiers around Jesus' tomb so that uh, no one would steal his body. What I'm going to do is uh, I want you to study all five objects. I'm going to take one away, and you see if you can figure out which one it is. Can you tell what's missing? It's the stone. What's missing now? It's the purple cloth that they placed around Jesus' back. What's missing this time? Did you guess the crown of thorns? Something else is missing now. Can you guess? It's the nails, the nails that nailed Jesus to the, to the cross. The last object is missing and maybe the most important one of all. It's the cross. Without that cross, we couldn't have um, our rescue story. Boys and girls, today's lesson about Jesus dying on the cross, his crucifixion, as I said before, is what um, all the other stories in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, point to this story of Jesus dying on the cross. It's so very important that I want to talk about it for just a minute. I want you guys to know that we all have sinned. Sin is when we mess up and we all do that. We deserve to die because of our sin because God is a righteous, just God. And he believes when you mess up, you get punished. But God loves us so much and he kept his promise, his always promise to send a rescuer. That rescuer was Jesus. Jesus was lied about uh, by the religious leaders who wanted to destroy him. The angry crowd said to crucify Jesus. Pilate's soldiers made fun of him. But Jesus never did anything wrong. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. And on the third day, which we're going to learn about later, Jesus rose again from the dead. When we trust Jesus, God forgives our sins and gives us life with him forever. Without the story that we learned about today, guys, there would be no way we could make it to heaven. No way. So today's story, that's why I want to keep uh, saying it, without today's story of Jesus dying on the cross, and we're going to learn next week what happened after that, without that very important part of the Bible, we wouldn't have any hope. But that cross and the empty grave that we're going to learn about soon gives us hope everlasting. I want to quickly uh, just talk about our memory verse again. I want you to say it with me. Philippians 2, 8. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. So important. It's central to our faith as Christians. Really fast, I'm going to go through our memory verses, or not our memory verses, but our questions. Got my question bag ready, and here's the first question. It says, who was the governor Jesus was taken to? Do you remember his name? It sounds like somebody that flies a plane. Pilate. Pilate is the governor that Jesus was taken to. I'm not sure that Pilate wanted Jesus to be killed, but he was just following what the people told him to do. There's a lot to that story, too, that we didn't get to today. All right, second question says, what did Jesus say about the lies uh, that the religious leaders told about him? Remember, they told uh, Pilate a bunch of lies about Jesus, and you would think Jesus would want to defend himself and say, no, I didn't do any of that. But instead, Jesus remained quiet. And I think the reason he did that is because he knew that this was God's plan, that he was going to have to be crucified. So he didn't want to do anything uh, 
to jeopardize that or put that uh, in question because he could have he could have saved himself but he decided not to because he loved you that much he knew that he had to take the punishment for your sin in order for you to get to heaven here is the next question I think I have a bunch of questions today maybe six what did the people say Pilate should do with Jesus? Remember, he said, um, I'm going to let a criminal go. And they said, let Barabbas go, even though he was a terrible person who had done lots of terrible things. They said, let Barabbas go. And then Pilate said, well, what should I do with Jesus? What did the crowd say? They said to kill him. They said to crucify him. All right, next question. Why did the soldiers make fun of Jesus? If you remember, they put a crown of thorns on his head, a purple robe on his back. Um, they even put a sign above his head making fun of him. Why did they do that? They didn't really think Jesus was a king, and they were just making fun of him. That was very cruel, wasn't it? Okay, oops. Here is the next question. Why did Jesus have to die? It's a very complicated but simple question at the same time, boys and girls. We know that Jesus didn't do anything wrong, but we did. And he knew that we would never be able to live a perfect life that could get us to heaven. So um, God had that plan to send his rescuer, his son Jesus, to die on the cross for your sin and for my sin. And I am so thankful that he did that because without that, we would have no hope, boys and girls. It's been a good lesson today. One of the most important lessons that we ever learn about. And sometimes I think we hear it so often that we kind of uh, lose our hearing when it's coming uh, or when it's being taught. We think, oh, I've heard that before. But it is so very important to think about the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us. And we shouldn't ever get tired of hearing about that. Because without that story, the whole Bible wouldn't make any sense. That's the central point. I love you. I hope you have a terrific week. And I will see you here next week for Sunday School. Bye-bye.